have a seat. It is Vision Sunday. Somebody say, let's go. Let's go. If I haven't met you before, my name is Dave. Alyssa and I serve as the lead pastors here at Northview. Man, I am I'm filled up. Uh, I would apologize for that, but I will not. Uh, I am filled up. We just had a week of fasting and prayer here at Northview. Anybody participate in some way, shape, or form? Raise your hand if you participated in some way here or at home in the week of fasting and prayer. Let's go. Let's make some noise for that. Praise God. I talked to a young man who at one of the prayer meetings said, Pastor Dave, I've been a Christian for a long time, and I have never fasted until this week. And I fasted and prayed the last two days, and I have never felt closer to God than I do right now. Isn't that amazing? Because God honors it when you seek him. The word of God says that he richly rewards those who earnestly seek him. Did you know that we had over 100 people at every prayer meeting throughout the entire week? Praise God, isn't that cool? And yesterday at 8 a.m., 163 people showed up to pray and seek God for our last prayer meeting. Let's make some noise if you're grateful for a church that prays. I'm so grateful to be part of a church that prays. And you're, um, you came, you picked a good Sunday to come. It's Vision Sunday. And whether you have been on this journey with us for the last couple of years, which is the amount of time Pastor Alyssa and I have been the pastors here at Northview, or whether you go back decades like me in this church, or whether you're a guest today, I feel like you picked an amazing day to be in church. And I believe with all my heart that you're gonna be able to hear and sense and understand a whole lot about what we're about at Northview and who we are as a church. Um, it's our tradition in this house, and when I say house, what I really mean is the house of God that we're stewarding. And it's a place where we want you to feel welcome and loved and appreciated and celebrated for the steps that you take. So that's what I mean when I say house. It's a tr the tr tradition of our house. Sorry, I just had caffeine for the first time in 14 days this morning. So if you're like, Dave's a little off, it's for a reason, okay? Um, I feel like I need a second, but I'm just gonna ease my way back in. That's wisdom, but anyway. Um, it's a tradition of our house once a year to reclarify the vision of our church. Um, this church was planted in 1926. So we were coming up on 100 years. And Alyssa and I, were we were lay ministers for the last 10 years leading up to becoming the lead pastors here. We were lay ministers in healthcare. And two years ago, God called us to leave our healthcare careers behind and take on the lead pastor role here at Northview. And it's one of the most amazing decisions we've ever made because we felt so strongly that it was God leading us. And how many of you know there is nothing like being in the will of God? There's nothing like being in the will of God. And so as we were preparing for the transition, we had hangout nights at our house and we began to dream about what kind of church God would allow us to build and steward in his name. And we didn't have cool language at the time but how we summarized it later with better language is that we would build a church under the banner of Jesus that would create opportunities for people to know Jesus and to become like him, amen? And um, I feel like a lot of people maybe don't realize that the first part of that mission is to create opportunities for people to know Jesus. Everyone say, know Jesus. So a lot of people in church say, I wish there was more of this or I wish there was more of that in church. And I wholeheartedly agree with most of those things. But as, as long as it's not an excuse to avoid reaching the person who is far from God. Um, I love more church stuff, but I always wanna make sure that we are following the directions of Jesus to leave the 99 that already know God and go after the one who's far from God, amen? And so I always wanna be a church that's putting that at the forefront because there are too many people in Fargo-Moorhead and around the world that are far from God. And so we began to talk through what would our church value? What would a church like this value? And if you wanna take notes on this, this would be really good because you're gonna hear a whole lot more about this uh, over the course of this year. And I know that there are 600 more people in church today than there were at this time last year. <laughs> Praise God. And so a lot of this is new for people. So you might be like, Dave, I already know the values of Northview. Great, this will be a reminder. A lot of us don't know them. And so we start with Jesus is our foundation. 
it all comes back to Jesus. We're always going to come back to the salvation of Jesus. We're not a self-help church, we're a salvation help church. Christian books are great, we believe the Bible. The Bible is the word of God that we lean on. The second is together is what we're about. How many of you like being together? Let's go, okay. How many of you like being together? Yeah, let's go. And so we're always looking for ways to be together. Life in, in Jesus is not to be lived alone. And we don't look for ways to divide people. We're looking for ways to rally people under the banner of Jesus. Um, we talked about family focused is who we are. We believe that God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is a generational God, which means everything good that God is doing in your life, he wants you to pass on to your children and to your grandchildren. And we're going to be consumed with kids all the time. You've probably heard a lot about that. We also believe in the redeemed family. The family that it doesn't look the way you envisioned it, but God can redeem your family and, and bring a good purpose and a great purpose through it. Um, we believe in bringing our best is what we do. We're not a church that does everything. We're a church that does less things well. I'd rather do fewer things well than try to boil the ocean and find that that's a big old ocean to boil. Again, first coffee, forgive me. <laughs> Just write down, Dave had coffee for the first time in a while during this message, disclaimer. Asterix, asterix, asterix. Um, man, uh, servant leadership is our passion. Man, if I'm too big to serve, I'm too small to lead. If I wanna be like Jesus, and so if I wanna just say I'm a Christian, I guess see how that works out for you in the end, it won't be good. But if you wanna be a disciple of Jesus and follow his ways, you serve. The definition of greatness in the mind of Christ is to serve. Jesus didn't come to be served, but to serve. If we serve people, God saves people. We all can serve. And finally, generosity is our privilege. We always wanna be a church that gives more than what's required. We always know that we're blessed to be a blessing. Praise God, someone say amen. So that's who, if you wanna know what we value, that's what we value. It's very important for me as the under shepherd, and when I say under shepherd, I mean that Jesus Christ is the great shepherd. He's in charge of the church. Uh, I'm the under shepherd. I'm, I'm called by God to hear from God, to use wisdom to guide our church in the direction he's asking us to go. But uh, we believe that vision is not just practical, it's also very biblical. And even Thomas Edison knew this. Many of us know Thomas Edison from science class and the light bulb. But he said this, a vision without a plan is just a hallucination. So God gives us plans to bring about vision. Imagine with me, close your eyes and imagine with me that you're driving to Minneapolis. Do this with me right now. You're driving to Minneapolis. You're seeing, you're seeing the Fergus Falls exit. You're seeing, many of us, you know every exit to Minneapolis because you've driven there a thousand times. Okay, now imagine at the end of the road, you saw you are now approaching Bismarck, North Dakota. You can open your eyes and look at me. Now, hey, nothing wrong with Bismarck, but if you thought you were going to Minneapolis, you will be surprised that you ended up in Bismarck. So vision creates direction, amen? So our, our mission and our values, it serves as a compass, which I know some of us don't even know what a compass is. A compass was this thing that you held in your hand and there's a little arrow and it pointed towards the magnetic North Pole, okay? It's a compass that leads to a destination. And I want, if you have a Bible, to turn with me to Habakkuk, coolest name in the Bible. That's my opinion. That's, there's nowhere in scripture where it says it's the coolest name. Um, Habakkuk chapter two, starting in verse one. This is um, God's direction to Habakkuk in the area of vision. Habakkuk said this, I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out and see what he will say to me and, I, and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time it hastens to the end, it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Make some noise if that's good news for you in your life. Everyone needs a vision. Say, everyone needs a vision. You need a vision for your family. You need a vision for your marriage. You need a vision for your kids, amen. You need a vision for every area of your life. Proverbs 29, verse 18, many of us who've been in church a long time, you know this verse. Where there's no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. 
but blessed is the one, is he who keeps the law. Man, if you, I heard it said this way one time, people aren't poor because they lack finances, especially in America. Most of the time, people are poor because they lack vision. Man, you might want to spend all your money on something today, but if you've got a vision, you put some holy restraint on what you, on what you buy. It's called a budget because you've got vision for what you really, what you really want, what, what God really wants, where you really want to go in your life. You might want to kind of mess around and break boundaries in dating relationships and push the line sexually, but man, when you get a vision for the, the husband or the wife that God has called you to and is, is planning for you, you start to have a vision that creates some some healthy boundaries, and likewise in church, when we've got a vision, it gives us some boundaries, it gives us some places to go, and man, without vision in other translations, it says that people perish, people die. Habakkuk was complaining to God in this verse. Habakkuk was essentially saying in this chapter, God, what I know is in heaven is not on earth. So he's complaining to God. And I think it's interesting because the word Habakkuk, his name means to wrestle. And um, it's interesting, too, because we just got through the week of our, 20, or our seven days of fasting and prayer. Did you know that the Hebrew word for prayer means to wrestle? And I believe with all my heart that once you get a vision from God, you need to be ready to wrestle. Be prepared to wrestle for your family. Be prepared to wrestle for the vision for your kids. Be prepared to wrestle for all the good things you know God has for you. You will need to wrestle for them. It's what Habakkuk's name means and what prayer is defined by. Isaiah 55, when I think about prayer, man, look no further than Isaiah chapter 55, verse eight and nine. This is God speaking. It's not me speaking. It's God speaking. God says this, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. This is what happens when we pray. We plow our hearts. You've heard that acronym before. We pray. We listen. That's the L. We obey. That's the O. And the W is, wow, God. When you plow your heart, you get your feet off the ground. When you pray, you get your feet off the ground spiritually to see from God's perspective. Isn't it interesting? It's interesting that Habakkuk said, um, I went up to a, a tower and God spoke to me. You're going to get a, a vision when you get up there, but you got to get your feet off the ground and see things from God's perspective. Uh, this is the definition that I've been working with, if you want to write this down. I think it's a beautiful thing. Um, it's not a scriptural definition, but I believe it's biblically based. The definition I've been working from is when w frustration with what is creates a passion for what could be. I wonder if any of you are frustrated with something in your life right now. I wonder if there's anybody here who you're in a situation, a part of your life that is not what you had hoped for or is not what you had envisioned. And it creates doubt in your mind. It creates sadness in your heart. It creates discouragement. I'm here to tell you today, prophetically, I feel so strongly about this, that God wants you to know with all of his heart, that he can turn your frustration and throw it in the garbage because everybody else can complain about their situation, but you don't have to complain anymore. Because God can take the frustration and give you a passion for a vision of where God wants to take you. And I want to let you know that's what happens here at Northview Church all the time. If you've been blessed by anything here, if anything in this church blesses you, I want to reassure you, it probably came out of a place of frustration. Hear me. When we were asking God what kind of church we wanted to be, a lot of what you see in here is because we were frustrated that we couldn't find this in Fargo-Moorhead, or at least not to the extent that we knew God wanted us to do it in. And so the two biggest pieces of feedback that I get about Northview is, one is, you guys are just so welcoming and loving when we come here. The second piece of feedback that I get that's higher than anything else is there's just a sense of community at Northview. Do you know those things aren't by accident? They're not by default. They're by design. Somebody say amen. 
Vision allows you to live your life by design, not by default. And just like we're called to do things by design, you're called to do things by design. And we are purposefully creating an environment where we believe God can work and bring people who don't know Jesus into a relationship with him and help people who know Jesus become more like him. Habakkuk said this, it's so interesting. If you want to write this down, write this down. Habakkuk said something very interesting. I will go to the tower and I will see, everyone say see, what he will say to me. So that's interesting because how do you see what God's going to say? I want you to write this down too. Sight is what you see when your eyes are open. Vision is what you see when your eyes are closed. Habakkuk understood that when he was going to get revelation from God, it was going to be through a picture of vision. Man, I'm so grateful for, for Joel chapter 2, the prophet Joel in the Bible. you got to read it. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Did you know that God doesn't just speak to you in audible voice? God speaks to you through his word, and he speaks to you in a picture, in a vision sometimes, in a dream at night. Aren't you glad that God's a God that gives you a picture and a vision for what he wants to do in your life? I know that's a stretch for some of us theologically, but I tell you what, if it's founded in God's word, God will start to give you a vision for the things in your life, the language of God. And that's why our vision phrase, um, which I'll come to this right now, is uh, it's not a secret. We put it on the wall, shoulder to shoulder. Say shoulder to shoulder. Like we have a vision phrase that brings us together. Um, it's not to be cool. It's to give us a common language to unify us, bring us some community, give us some accountability, and give us a, some direction of what's, what the year is going to encapsulate. And um, in Ezekiel chapter 47, um, another Old Testament prophet, Ezekiel's given a vision of what was going to happen when Jesus Christ came. And it was a vision of the temple of God, and there was a river flowing out of the temple. And the river was flowing out of the temple, and as the river flowed, it got deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and it was going to show the, the salvation of people coming from the house of God and bringing many people to Christ. And this is what, this is what the vision sounded like. God said, wherever the river flows, life will flourish. Great schools of fish, because the river is turning the salt sea into fresh water. Where the river flows, life abounds. Fishermen will stand shoulder to shoulder. Say it. Along the shore from En Gedi all the way north to En Englaim, casting their nets. The sea will teem with fish of all kinds, like the fish of the great Mediterranean. The fish and the fishermen are prophetic of lost people, people that are far from God, coming into salvation and coming into a relationship with Jesus Christ. What I see this year is a great many people coming to a knowledge of Jesus Christ in Fargo-Moorhead. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody make some noise? If you believe, this will be a year of salvation. It will be. Many people coming to Christ. Many people stepping into salvation. The word of God says, today is the day of the Lord's favor. Now is the time of salvation. Zephaniah, another Old Testament prophet. You're getting Old Testament Bible teaching today. I hope that's okay. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9. For then I will give to the people's purified lips. What he's saying there is, I'm going to give people even a new way to talk. I'll give people purified lips that they, all of them may call on the name of the Lord to serve him shoulder to shoulder. We are a 98-year-old church with fresh vision. Someone say hallelujah. Man, we're not dying. We're used, but we're fresh. Amen? And I want us to be fresh for Jesus Christ this year. We created a web page for people to understand some of the specifics of the vision, northview.life slash vision. If you're ever curious where we've been, where we're going, it's all there. I want to highlight just a few things for you today. With our one vision, we don't have a ton of different visions. We have one vision at Northview. And we see it three ways. In Acts chapter 1, as we're shoulder to shoulder this year, God is giving us the opportunity to make an impact at the ends of the earth, regionally and locally. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus said this to his disciples, that you will be my witnesses, you will give an account of what I've done in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. For us, that's Fargo-Moorhead. 
That's this region of the United States, and it's the ends of the earth. That's the same one. We actually use that one. And I'll start at the ends of the earth, um, really our world in Nicaragua. So did you know that last year, our biggest international partner, we have six strategic international par partners. One is Child Hope in Nicaragua. And last year, your generosity fueled the vision for $45,000 to go to Child Hope so that 200 children could have expanded access to the gospel and to education and to dental care and health care. Man, and praise God, I want to let you know about the first major transaction that we made as a church right here in January, just a week ago. We had end-of-year generosity to the extent where we gave $50,000 to Child Hope Nicaragua a week ago. Make some noise. It's, it was given on your behalf, and I wanted to let you know. And that will enable us to add three classrooms to a school called the Good Samaritan School, and 130 more children will have access to the gospel, to education, and to health care, and that their parents would be trained in the ways of God, and they're going to experience God too because of your generosity. And man, we love our world. Um, we have four strategic regional partners. Our biggest regional partner is Alaska Student Partnership. Um, if you want to know more about what that is, I was just in Bethel, Alaska, and a small village of Akachuk, Alaska, where six teachers are teaching where nobody wants to teach. It's literally at the ends of the earth. You can only get there by a snow machine or a boat or a hopper uh, bush plane. We went, by snow, we went by snowmobile. And it was dangerous, and Jay was with me, and it was not Alyssa Liedahl approved. <laughs> we may have shared more details after we got back. But I will tell you what, you gave $30,000 to send 21 missionary teachers out to rural Alaska into villages to have how, yeah, praise God. Make some noise if you're grateful. And I got to sit in a home in Akachuk, Alaska, where they do home church because there's no consistent gospel witness. There's no, there's no Bible-believing, gospel-presenting church. But they're doing house church. And I got to pray with these teacher missionaries, and I got to sit with them, and I got to thank them for saying yes to God, for, for going the, to the ends of the earth. And did you know this year we have vision to send $50,000 to Alaska Student Partnerships so they can finish Hub One did you know that next month, 100 people from the 60 villages in rural Alaska will come together in the hub, which sits at a slant? Like, if, you, if, you're, if you're upright, you're kind of at a slant. So we're going to fix that. And, and we're going to um, allow these, these gatherings as a hub for all of these missionaries to come together to be trained. And did you know there's 250 people going to western Alaska this summer for missions trips? Isn't that amazing? And we're sending a team to Nicaragua in February, and this summer we are sending a team to Alaska, and all of the dollars are gonna be with them that's needed to accomplish the vision because God's gonna fulfill the vision. Praise God. Let's make some noise if you're grateful. Um, Steve was so kind to let me go with him. Uh, Steve is coming in March to give us another update. God is using Steve in a sovereign way. I really believe this with all my heart. God is doing a sovereign work in Western Alaska that is, that is not seen to that extent in other parts of the earth. It's a sovereign work of God on the earth. And I just wanted to let you know it's a special place, it's good soil. We have, st we have six strategic partners uh, here locally, and I wanna let you know that uh, because of your generosity, because of the vision to partner with public schools, we are, we are essentially hotline status with Ed Clapp School and Jefferson Elementary. Because of us working together shoulder to shoulder, 49 children had tangible needs met in the public schools, um, mostly through winter clothing. We believe those kids should be able to play outside with all the other kids, amen? Um, a lot of churches do um, God behind bars. They send their live stream into the jails. Um, we send Mike Sanyu into the jails. Mike Sanyu is by far our biggest partner in the community. Mike Sanyu, are you here, Pastor Mike? I know you're either first or second. Pastor Mike, personally, water baptized 137 inmates who accepted Christ in Cass County Jail last year. Isn't that amazing? He does church Friday nights in the jails, and he brings anybody who wants to come with him to come, except you might have to share your testimony. That's his requirement. Got to share your story. And so um, I love God behind bars. I love those programs. But man, I love sending a real person behind bars, a real pastor that can pray with people and baptize people. 
Um, he shared a testimony of one lady. I don't have the, t- uh, the time today to share it all, but just one lady who said, tell all my friends in the Genesis program, they'll never believe I accepted Jesus Christ and got baptized. They'll never believe it, but it's true. We were able to really be there for our police uh, last year. There was that shooting that was so tragic. Officer d- uh, died and others injured. And I got a, a letter. This is, I just want to report to you because this is important to me because we are the vision. It's not me. Um, I got a letter from our police chief saying, thank you, Northview Church, for really being there for us. And we believe that as we serve people, God saves people. Like We can't save anybody, but I'll tell you what. If we serve the city, God will save the city. I, I don't even have time to go through everything that God is doing in youth and Chi Alpha. Did you know Friday night during the week of fasting and prayer, we had a bunch of college students here for many hours towards the middle of the night praying. God's moving on the college campus. We have our Oasis ministry, our older adults. We have our young adult, we have vision for young adults. Anybody going to Rhythm Conference in like two weeks, right? Pastor Stephen, two weeks from now? Rhythm Conference, you gotta go. We don't know, if there is one we don't know about it, we don't know of another young adult conference in the state of North Dakota that's faith-based. But we're creating a space for young adults to press into their relationship with God. If you are in your 20s and 30s, you gotta go to Rhythm Conference. We have vision that God would use our church to reach the next generation. And our young adults are so important, so critical. And I want to say I'm still a young adult, but I'm not. Everyone say, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, I I have some gray beard, so that's why I shave. I want to show you something. I got a huge heart for Northview women. Someone say amen. Hey, where are you at? Um, Sorry, I'm trying to resonate with the women. That's not how you do it. But uh, (laughs) how many of you believe that God is calling men to be the servant leaders in the home? I know it's a stretch for some people. I know, I know we're all created in the image of God, but man, don't, don't tell me that the Bible doesn't talk about the man of God in the home being the leader that God designed him to be. Um, when I stand before God, I don't stand before God with Alyssa. I'd love to. She's beautiful and amazing. Um, and we're going to partner our whole lives, babe. We're going to do this till we die. But I will not stand before God with her. I'll stand before God on my own. There's not enough spirituality in Alyssa to take care of me. I need to have my own special personal relationship with God. And I want to show you a picture of the last men's night we had, uh, maybe a mini video. Man, that's men of God, seeking God. Let's go. Make some noise if you're glad that men gather to go deeper in their faith. <laughs> Pastor Mark has a lot of fun stuff planned, but we're gonna, we have vision for men and women to grow in their God-given purpose and destiny, shoulder to shoulder. Say it. Shoulder to shoulder. We have a vision for a marriage pastor. We, wanna, we want marriages to be saved before they start. We want marriages to be discipled and redeemed. We want to help people navigate remarriage and broken marriage. We want to help people find their calling in marriage and doing marriage God's way. We have a pastor for almost every area of the church, but not marriage. That's terrible. That should change, shouldn't it? That should change, right? That should change. So we're going to have a marriage pastor in the fall, God willing. It's going to happen. Um, The other one I want to talk to you about is kids. Everyone say kids. But before I do, I want to let you know a few cool things that happened. In 2023, 131 people were water baptized at Northview Church. Praise God. Make some noise if you're grateful. If you haven't been baptized, you got to get baptized today. It's happening. You don't even need to wait. You can do it today. 145 people completed growth track, decided to take a step, grow in their faith. Sunday morning attendance grew by 25%. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Over 600 of you are in life groups right now. Isn't that amazing? 107 people went through Alpha. Now, 227 people checked out Alpha, but we don't want to exaggerate the number. There were 107 people that went to over half of the Alpha classes. And those of you who've been through Alpha, you know that's a commitment to get to those classes. So I'm believing that God is doing a new thing and bringing us into a new season, and I just can't wait to see what God does. But kids' ministry is growing a lot. Um, I approved this week my seventh Band-Aid fix to our kids' ministry space. We're going to knock down a wall. You hear a lot in politics to build the wall? We're tearing them down. Is that okay? Is he getting political? No, I'm not. We're just we're tearing down walls because we need space. Um, we had overflow. We needed more room for our five-year-olds and our kindergartners. So I'm going to show you what your generosity did. We put up a temporary space for five-year-olds and kindergartners. Um, I wanted to give you a little glimpse of what that is. Um, These are fully functional, fully safe, but very temporary. 
Um, I want our, our parents to be very aware, fully in, fully in the enclosed envelope, fully um, secure. So that's for our five-year-olds and kindergartners. Uh, Pastor Mark was even tightening the slide today so that nobody would have problems. And then this, is one, this one's really special. Um, we have some people in our church that had a vision for children with unique challenges and special needs. How many of you believe that God wants all children to feel loved in church? This is the bridge. So we're, just, we're knocking down walls and creating... Can, can you do a fly-through of that again? I'm so sorry. Maddie, you're amazing. I believe it's Maddie up there today. The bridge. The vision for the bridge is that children with special needs or unique challenges would experience God. This isn't just a place to care for them. It's a place for them to experience God. And, I'm sorry, but for their parents to be able to sit together in church and experience God too. There's so many parents that only one can go at a time. But this opens the door for both parents to come to church. And last week, uh, parents were right in the second row and they were, they were sitting. It was like one of their first times to sit together in church and experience God as a married couple because of your generosity. So I just want to say thank you. <laughs> it's only offered second service, so um, we're believing God's going to grow it and expand it. Um, but I told you it's our seventh Band-Aid fix because... Our executive pastor, uh, one of our executive pastors, Garrett Hendricks, said, I don't think there are more Band-Aids in the box, Dave. <laughs> I think we've used our last Band-Aid. And on our uh, Vision One pager um, this fall, you probably, if you were here, you know that um, Visioneering, which is a very large, very God-centered company, has helped us to do a, a master plan for our whole facility. And we're just sensing that God's telling us that we have to move on a phase that will help us redesign and expand our kids' ministry. And that this has to come this year. We have to begin the process this year. Um, last year, 195 new families checked in kids to kids' church. And I know a few of those were people passing through town or their friends for, for Christmas, but I want to let you know it wasn't like that many. There were a few, but there weren't like that many. God's doing a sovereign work. Make some noise if you're glad God is doing a sovereign work at Northview Church, bringing people close to God. So I want to give you a couple things the vision is to continue to reach more people so they would know Jesus and become like him shoulder to shoulder. Say shoulder to shoulder. Praise God. We're going to do this together. Um, we got to do a transformational work in kids. I wish I could share more details with you. I wanted to have it ready by today, but I, I didn't want to rush it. I didn't want to be like that guy that just like plows forward and doesn't think and ponder and assess. So I'll give you more information in the coming months about that transformational work. But I want to let you know it's coming. I also want to let you know something else is coming and we'll give more details over the coming months. But as a bridge to that plan, um, we will need three services and different service times. So don't, get comfortable but not too comfortable with the time that you're going to church. You might say, Dave, but we have a large balcony you know, today, kids' ministry in the parking lot fill up way quicker than our worship center does. So we want to make sure that we don't put any barriers that would allow somebody, that would normally uh, allow somebody to come to Christ. So that's number one. Everyone say number one. It's kids. Number two, everyone say number two. To serve and love and grow as a church, it's so important that we all go to growth track. If I had one step for you today to take, It'd be to sign up for Growth Track. Sign up to grow. That's really the call. Not to sign up for a class, to sign up to grow. And next week, none other than Megan Piker, who stood on this stage and gave announcements, she's going to be leading Growth Track next week, Sunday, during the second service. Everyone say second service. It's like at 11 a.m., sign up to grow and participate, I'm believing that next Sunday at 11 a.m. will be our biggest growth track class ever. Are you believing for that too? Yes. Pastor Jeremy, is anybody else believing for that? Yes. Sometimes you just got to clap till you believe it. We just see that as such a huge point because if people say, well, Dave, you talked about community, but I don't feel it. Or you talked about feeling welcome, but I don't feel it. Trust me, if you go to Growth Track, and if you've been to a Growth Track, go to a life group. If you do those things, 
you will catch the vision that God has for your life. God has a special direction and vision for your life. And third, I really want everyone to be in a life group. I talked a little bit about it, but we have 60 life groups at Northview Church. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. But we need 80 life groups because we don't want to just be a big church. We want to be a big church with lots of small churches in it so that everyone can have the sense of connection and family that maybe you have if you're in a life group today. So would you, would you pray about that? Would you be part of Growth Track? We believe that if God will help us take care of children, we believe that if God will help us to grow together in, in environments like Growth Track, and if there are as many life groups as we need so that people can have community, God will help us to see the vision forward where we can keep reaching people for Jesus and helping people become like him. Anybody grateful? Make some noise if you're grateful for a God vision that brings us forward, that propels us forward. Stand with me as we close. Um, you might want to give to the vision. We, we didn't do a giving moment, but I just want to let you know that um, the ways to give are on the screen. And um, you might have said, Dave, I, I've never given to the work of Jesus through Northview Church before. Uh, you know, if we all gave, the vision would go forward with God's help. Um, if we all participated, what could God do? God's already doing so much. Maybe you've given once or twice before, but you've never been consistent. Maybe God wants to make you a consistent giver. Uh, Alyssa and I, we feel not only that, does the first 10% go to the Lord as a tithe? We believe that more than that goes. Alyssa and I have extended ourselves further than we ever have before to the vision to give back what God's so freely given us. So maybe you want to be an extravagant giver. You have to remember, I'm a dangerous man right now. After a week of fasting and prayer, I feel like I can pray and ask God for anything. It's, so I'm being, I know I'm being bold today, but I feel like as you participate in what God's doing, we know from his word that you'll never be disappointed. Amen. So I'd encourage you to give and to give generously to the vision. Start today. Do it with your spouse. Do it as a family. Last night, Harper said, um, Dad, you know that $20 bill that's in the bank? Because here's the, here's the deal. So she had a $20 bill. I needed it, so I used it. And then she asked me where it was, and I said, it's in the bank. So she called me out on it last night. This is a true story. This is my witness. And she said, Dad, you know that $20 bill in the bank? I said, yeah. She said, can I give it to God today? And so I, I wrote a check out for $20, and I put in the memo, Harper's gift to God. And she was so excited. She's like, I'm going to give this up in church today. And I just encouraged Harper. I said, Harper, you won't believe this, but there are some people who will never do the thing that you're doing, but you're doing it as a six-year-old girl. And man, you should have seen the joy on her face. Um, if God can do a work in Harper's heart, God can do a work in your heart, in your family. Praise God. I'm going to pray over that, and then I'll lead us in our next step. Father, we thank you for every gift. We thank you for every giver. We thank you that you're the God that supplies all of our needs and that generosity accelerates the vision. Thank you that as we give, you give us so much more we could never repay. We love you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Can you make some noise if you're grateful that God's a supplier, a giver, a lover? We're gonna go into a last worship song, but I wanna encourage you in this. In Hebrews chapter nine, at the very end of the chapter, it said that Jesus will come again, but not to take away sin, but to take those with him who are earnestly waiting for him. Jesus is coming again, but it's not to take away sin, it's to take the people who have been believing in him. If you need to give your heart to Jesus today, if you need to pray a prayer of salvation, the slide is behind me to back it up with scripture. We're not gonna do a hand raise and a prayer together today because I want you to do something different if you wanna make a decision to follow Jesus. At the end of this message, our prayer team is gonna be lined across the front. I want you to come forward and find one of our prayer partners and I want you just to say this to them, I wanna receive Jesus today. And they will lead you in a prayer to receive Jesus today. Make sure you don't leave without an I have decided bag that gives you resources on how to live for Jesus the rest of your life. Somebody say amen. Amen. So if you need to give your heart to Jesus, do that at the end of the service. We want to make that meaningful for you. Let's open up our hands to the Lord as if to receive as we go into one last worship song before I let you go. Father, we thank you so much for vision. God, I pray for each person that we would have a vision of how we can be part of a church. For those of us who are guests today, would you bless us? For those of us, it's our first time. Lord, I know you're prompting us to just keep coming back. 
But Lord, we give you the praise and worship for the vision you're now giving us for our own lives. You get all the praise, you get all the glory, and all God's people